I'm here with uh, International Society of Basis President Hans Sturm and uh, Ball State University double bass professor, and I'm Jason Heath, as you all know. So uh, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the robot fingering system today. Yeah, I, I noticed from uh, uh, from at one point in your website that, that you had said uh, uh, something about um, that you you had toyed with the idea of the pivot and so on, but that you came up like I did with the, with the Simondel. I'm assuming it was Simondel, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that at, at you you wish to sometime have more have have a better idea. And so I, I thought maybe when when you talked to me about coming up and doing something, maybe it would be fun to sort of do an introductory lesson on. Uh, on this technique and uh, how it compares with the other and then maybe uh, share some things. So these are some of the tenets and of course I want to tell everybody that, that, that while Francois is still with us that you really must make every effort to see him and be with him and mm -hmm. because uh, I mean it's one thing for me to say and share these things but it's another thing to have the full experience of being with Francois. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see, the, the first thing that I want to say is uh, in terms of, especially for uh, the old, those of us who came up in, I'll call the old school, mm -hmm. um, is there's a concern for intonation with the pivot. That seems to be the, the number one thing. And, and so, in, in 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 order to sort of explain that, and I don't want to lecture too much. I want to I want to dive into it, but there are some points that need to be made first. Um, uh, as George Vance would say, the key to this is your thumb. The thumb, uh, it's, it's, it's really the brain of, of the left hand. And so what we're doing is we're keeping the left hand very relaxed. We're pivoting with our thumb. And, and the notes are played in relation to your thumb. Of course, I'm teaching in Indiana and they're all crazy about the pivot because it's basketball country. But so once you, once you understand the, uh, the motion that's involved, and that's the other key, that's the second thing. First is understanding that the thumbs, so we have the placement of the hand in relation to the bass first, and then we have the shape of the hand and the, the relation to the notes to the thumb. That's the second thing. When, when we talk about then this, this other big stuff, it's the motion. And I'll just give a, just a short, a short little thing about this. It, it, the, my analogy is that uh, if you concentrate on the intonation, it's too late. And this is Francois' rap about finding the C when he was playing in the band as a kid because you, you have the open G, the A, and the B, and it's all very easy. But the C, you have to shift for, and that's where to find the C. And then he realized if he left his thumb in the same place and just did this, he always had the C. It was always in the same place. But that comes from understanding the motion. So the idea is we need to refine the motion. And then the intonation, the, 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 the way that I view it is the intonation is the evidence of a correct motion. In other words, if, if the, the analogy I use for the students is, you know, if the, you, you see somebody who's shot and they spilled their glass of wine and the person's upset about the spilled wine. That, that's like being upset about the intonation one. <laughs> it's the motion's fault, okay? So with that in mind, that it's the thumb and then concentrating on the motion, and then we, we work on the intonation through working on the motion. So the first thing I want you to do is take your hand back like normal, normal half position, and then slide down till your thumb stops on the base. Right. Perfect. Now, I want you to play the D harmonic on the G string with your first finger. Lovely. Now, this is the most comfortable and most stable place to be on the bass. Why? Your thumb can't go any further, and the, the, that position of your thumb in relation to the bass will never change. And the harmonic is related to the vibrating string length, the distance between the nut and the bridge. So the placement of that harmonic will never change. So once you understand this shape, you will never ever hit the D out of tune with your first finger again, right? So then what, what, what we do is, is to begin to introduce. Now because you are a player of advanced maturation, <laughs> we're going to go fast. So we're not going to go step by step like, or, or, like we would ordinarily with, with the younger students. So we have the D, and then ordinarily I just say play D, E with one, one, four. So you're very comfortable in this position. It's, it's typical. This is, by the way, is the third position for Francois. He divides the, the fingerboard into six positions. Okay? So play, play for me just this. You have a harmonic, and then press, and then E with a fourth finger. Now the next thing that I want to do to introduce the pivot then is simply to say you play the D with one instead of playing the E with four. You keep your hand relaxed and play the E with two. Right. 
Now it's very important that the contact place of the thumb remains the same. Because as Francois would say, it's security total. He wants to be completely secure in the position. So we're looking for the largest landmarks. So now we play D, pivot to E, and then play F. Right. Now I want to take it one step further, and at this particular position, I want to make a pivot to F sharp. So we say D, pivot to E, pivot to F sharp, and then after you pivot to F sharp, extend your third finger, leaving your thumb behind, and play the G harmonic. F sharp with four. And then right, right. Now this is a big, big jack step, yeah? So uh, we, we, may, we have to see how the hand is, the shape of the hand, the shape of the base, the size of the person and everything. All that needs to be taken into consideration to make this work. So, so now we, we have now this, we play D, E, F sharp, G here, okay? So now we come back into the, into the low position, play open G. A with one, and B with four, like normal. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take, play the open G, A with one, and this time pivot to, to B with two. Bravo. And now you can play C very easily. Now, the importance of this is to understand that this, especially when we're when we're when we're doing descending. When you play the C with the fourth finger in the pivot, you're playing in this position. Normally, we feel comfortable, being old school players, to have our thumb across from two wherever that is. But when we come to this place, in descending shift, we have to remember where our thumb is in order to keep this position secure. This is position number one. And the idea in position number one is we, we, we want to be able to cover everything from the A flat to, to the C comfortably, yeah. And you can do it very very easily, right? Okay, so now we're going to play, I want you to play a G major scale using the traditional fingering. Right, now I want you to play with a pivot fingering. So play open G, A with one, keep the hand relaxed, pivot to B with two, play C with four. Stop, slide your hand down till the thumb stops, Play the D with one, pivot to E with two, pivot to F sharp with four, extend your third finger and play G. So we have cut out two plus two plus shifts by, by, by doing it this way. Okay. So the, 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 the ramifications are of course to try and play more notes in a single position so we don't have to shift as much because every time we, we make a large motion, a large shift, we take more chances for for our, our, our intonation.